Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to another uh, episode of Education Matters with uh, Jim O'Connell. I have a special guest with us tonight, and I'll be introducing him in a moment. But um, first of all, I'd like to recognize that this is the week of St. Patrick's Day, and it behooves me to mention that. Um, for those of you who think it was all over since Sunday the 17th, the actual feast, I'd want you all to remember that the parade in Manchester is on on uh, the 31st, so almost a full two weeks from now at 12 o'clock. It'll be uh, kicking off and coming down Elm Street. It's a great parade, a great day out. The bars and restaurants in Manchester do a great job, and uh, if you want to have a lot of fun and a good day in Manchester and see it at its best, then Sunday the 31st at 12 o'clock would be a great place to start. Um, there's also a road race on the day before and lots of things happening around that period, so um, I would uh, I would commend that to you. So without further ado, I'm very pleased to have, and I'm honoured to have, um, our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Bolgan Vargas, with us here tonight. Welcome, Dr. Vargas. Pleasure to be here. Thank you to be, for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, I know that uh, many of our watchers and listeners will know that uh, that you are uh, coming to the end of your tenure. Um, another month or so, is that is that right? That is correct, yes. All right. So um, uh, would you like to uh, uh, give us, a, 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 um, throwing you in at the deep end, so to speak, <laughs> do you want to give us like a brief overview of your, was it two and a half years or so you were yeah. in Manchester? If if you had to give sort of, you know, the, the brief... Um, you know, sort of your brief thoughts. They don't have to be brief. Yeah. You can take an hour if you want. No. But you know, your thoughts on your on your time in Manchester and and uh, as you came in and now as you're departing. Well, this is a great city. I'm very appreciative of all the families and the teachers and staff, administrator and the students who are part of the uh, the school system in here. And um, it's a system with such um, potential. That is, um, in my view, um, the Manchester public school system does a great job for um, so many of our students. And um, as you know yourself, your children went through the school system, and you're a proud parent. Yes, I am. And, I uh, and I still have one remaining, yeah. right? I've got one. I've got one as a that, junior. That is so correct, I'm, and and sure that you will attest to what I'm going to say, and that is that uh, the majority of students are succeeding. However, a great system is about every child. And uh, to be about every child, you have to have a strong system of support for every kid, uh, because uh, in the time that we are living, uh, you need to have uh, the necessary skill set uh, to be successful. No longer I will live in a, a time when if you didn't graduate for high school, there were significant space for you in the economy. Uh, so, as it is evidenced by so many people that I have conversed with, the families were generational families who used to work in the mill. Right. And they came here from actually sometime from other country and they extremely well. Those days are gone, and therefore we had to do a much better job in providing a, um, a, a high quality education for every child uh, with the aim in mind that the times are changing uh, in a way that uh, those of us who grew up in the 20th century no longer recognize. Like, for example, most of our kids are not taking tests with paper and pencil. They are taking it in front of a computer, and the test um, is given to a critical mass of students across the country or across the, uh, across the state. Even myself, and I don't want to pretend that I'm... Um, an old, old fellow, but I would tell you that when I started in education, if a, a parent or, um, or even the, um, another colleagues in another school would, would ask me, how did you kid do in a test? I'd be looking at them like, none of your business. Today, all the information about school are public, and that's right. a good thing. But nevertheless, um, um, we need to maintain our focus in mind that it's about every child. It's right. not necessarily about every test. 
although no one would argue that it, it matter on um, uh, how well a particular child is doing in an assessment. Uh, nevertheless, it's more complicated than that to educate a child today right. than just to look up uh, the assessment of the kid. So I guess the point that I want to make is that there are complexity. Uh, today, the, those of us who were educated in the 20th century uh, didn't encounter well, I, I'm old enough to remember, and people in the United States might find might find this strange. But you know, um, I was going to uh, elementary school in the 1960s back in Ireland, yeah. and uh, you think how much things have changed. When I was going to elementary school, uh, like as a first grader, perhaps or kindergarten or first grade, um, if you can believe this, when I first learned to write, and it was we had to learn our letters, and it was the, we had the nuns, of course, teaching us when you were younger, and then as a boy, when we had separate schools for girls and boys. But when I first uh, started writing, it was with an inkwell, and uh, and a nib and a pen with a nib in it, and you had the, the old desk like you'd see in an old movie, and we'd stick the nib in, nib in there, and you'd have to write your letters. Yes, and of course, if you had a bl- and we had blotting paper, and you came home from school with blue patches, you know, on your fingers, mm-hmm. and of course the nuns they were they were more interested in neatness than they were in yeah, anything right, yeah. else. So it could be wrong once it was very neat. That was the first thing. But it, it, I, that's kind of not important to this conversation, except that when I think about how things have changed in my lifetime, uh, uh, that's, that's sort of an extreme, but it actually is true about me. Um, but it's, I remember the debate going on about when I was in high school about whether to allow calculators in high school <laughs> or not. That, you know, the, the idea, the thought was that people were sort of yeah. cheating. And you'd have people saying, you know, how are we going to teach our kids to add and subtract and multiply if they're using these newfangled, yeah, right. um, um, you know, uh, things? So, of course, nowadays our kids sort of come out of the yeah. come out come out of kindergarten and their fingers fly on on digital Correct. keypads yeah, right. and and the world that's available to them, you know, the yeah. knowledge that's available to them. But I think what is lost on on people, uh, maybe not, maybe it's not lost on me, but I think it's important. Um, for people to realize that it is a global economy. Yep. So it's not we're not just competing with the surrounding towns or the town furthest up the Merrimack Valley mm-hmm. or further down the Merrimack Valley. Our children in our schools today, the ones that you are responsible for in every day, are growing are growing up in a world where they will compete directly with kids who are currently in school in Japan, Korea, Germany, Brazil, Australia, and and yeah, right. it's you know it's an interconnect and that that's sort of a uh, that that's a frightening challenge but a, but a huge opportunity. Absolutely, and um, I mentioned technology because that's a, this is a budget season, right. and if you are a resident of Manchester. If you want to know how much uh, needs we have when it comes to technology in other area, I would like to invite you to come to our schools and do a tour with me. And I also would like to invite you to go to another school system in the surrounding area. And what you will find is that unfortunately, by the way, many of our families are doing well. They have the means, the financial resources to buy their own children, a scientific calculator. Right. To your point yes. about kid using that, and that's a necessary tool today right. uh, to succeed in, in a modern, highly uh, technological, knowledge-based society. Uh, but um, I make the point about technology because I, I am asking this community to please invest $1.3 million in technology. And even after that investment, we were still very far behind because in our school system, we don't have um, a, a robust replacement system for technology. Right. And as we know, uh, one of the challenges that we had today, for example, if you were educated in the early part or even at, in the later part of the 20th century, a pen and a pencil were a good notebook that will do. Right. Uh, it's no longer the case, and uh, particularly in places like Manchester, we, the school system is responsible to mitigate that gap that we have. Uh, those that have the means and resources because they were born into a fortunate situation, and thank God that 
for 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 the majority of our children are born in that situation with mm-hmm. strong family that can provide the support. Then we have a significant number of students. Um, I'm sure they didn't write a letter to God, please (laughs) give me this situation. But the bottom line is that all of us have an obligation to make sure that we have a public school system here that is working for everyone. Right. And and it may, I have to tell you that, uh, you know, knowing uh, um, many, uh, many people who um, who struggle and I, I, I. I think people sometimes imagine that, that those who are struggling are sort of, the, you know, and they are, of course, too, but people, we think about the most extreme cases, the homeless, the people who are ill, the people dealing with uh, incarceration and mental health, and the kids of those families, etc. But there are, there is a whole, there are also sort of a hidden group of people who struggle financially and struggle in other ways with things we don't see or know and you know and teachers or good teachers become aware of those things over time but i know families in manchester who outwardly would appear to be fine but when their kid comes home from school in 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 sixth or seventh grade or something and they're beginning to do uh, uh, you know to, to require a scientific calculator and it's 120 dollars and, and they don't have 120 dollars and um these are the kind of inequities that uh, that uh, that um, are important. Let me just share with people if you haven't, if you don't know already, the call in number here is um, six four zero three zero nine one, and you're very welcome to call in whether you. Um, um, you know, whatever your opinions might be, you can call in to praise, to criticize, or to offer uh, comments. We'd be very happy to um, we'd be very happy to hear from you. So again, six four zero three zero nine one. Let me. If I might make a point about, it's not just about technology, so our teachers, <clears throat> administrators, and people who work with children today, we are being asked to do more than at any other time in our history. And right. that is, and we are very proud, those of us that work in the school system, and are willing to um, and, uh, enjoy and love the work. Uh, we have some of the greatest people in our system. I mean, they do an incredible job um, uh, working with children, um, protecting and and doing their best they can to for them to get a good education. And if you were to ask a teacher today, you were to write a list of the thing that they are asked to do today and the thing that they were asked to do when you and I went to school, you'd be very surprised um, uh, how much um, uh, we have asked of them, or school system in particular. Like, for example, just to give you three examples, uh, the majority of school, when they were building, when they were built, they didn't have cafeteria. Right. Uh, the majority of them didn't have all of them had a blackboard. They didn't necessarily need to be rewired to support uh, an internet system and a computer-based s- s- system. The majority of our teachers were not asked to deal with the social-emotional need or children to the extent that we ask them today. And part of that is because society had changed. Like, for example, yeah. um, uh, there was a time when uh, the majority of our children um, um, and families were multi-generational family would stay in the same neighborhood. To so them, that is changing and is bringing different stress to, to children. And there's so much complexity. You mentioned things that are happening outside, let's say, our city. They have a greater impact on us today right. than they did in the past. And the school, as well as uh, all of us, end up dealing with that situation. Therefore, um, our our schools need to be equipped and prepared to respond to what we ask 
I'll, I'll teach it to do and our administrator and all that stuff. Man. And and I know that the other thing, of course, is that uh, is that when people do long term sort of comparisons, and I hear people, and I like to treat everybody. I like I like to think I, I think I treat everybody with respect, and um, so it's not about disrespect, but but I I just uh, I listen to people who who talk about something that was so forty years ago. And or 20 years ago, and you know it's just not you know the, the comparisons can't be made. But one of the another, one of the things that happened, of course, is that something that I think is wonderful and I fully support is that we have mainstreamed our kids with special needs. And if you were walking around uh, New Hampshire uh, 30 years ago, there were red brick buildings up in Concord, and yeah. you know kids who were who didn't fall into the category of being you know, yeah. whatever that normal was they ended up being housed out in different places and sort of out of sight out of mind mm. and everybody identifies with terrible like documentaries we see on television about the way children were treated in, in you know in the 1950s or 60s and um they should take great pride in the fact that nowadays none of that happens, but there is a cost to having kids with all kinds of difficulties and, and challenges. Uh, they bring all their blessings, which is important uh, to our school district, but of course they can be, uh, they can be very costly. So it isn't, um, so that the whole idea of special education, people need to understand that this is a communal good, a net good, it's good for the yeah. kids, it's good for families, but it's got a huge cost to uh, the Co system. Correct, and, and we are very proud that we are asked to do that work. Right now we have over uh, 500 students that are three years old, children considered children with special need. They have some kind of developmental disability. By law, we are required to provide services, and we are proud. But then society, the state of New Hampshire, unfortunately, unfortunately, doesn't recognize that reality. That if you ask a school system to do more for kids, then we need to invest more. A city need to recognize that, and also the nation as well. Because some of this law are complicated. Because mm -hmm. they, and we are very proud and a supporter that for every child and that family to get, it, to get the uh, support that they need. In many cases, the family will not be able to go to work if they didn't have a system like ours who provide the kind of services so right. that the family can continue to be a contributing to the economy and to society. So we appreciate that function, but there's a sad reality here in New Hampshire, and particularly in Manchester. We spend the least amount per pupil, yet we are asked to do, arguably, the most challenging job in the state of New Hampshire. Right. And there are so many inequity in the uh, f funding formula. You know, like, for example, you have a father, and uh, if you had two children, and you were to have a child that is blind, and a child that had perfect vision, I think that your doctor, your physician, and everybody in society will say to you, you cannot treat both of those two children in the same. You're right. going to have to guide and support the child that lack the vision, can see differently than the child that has uh, a perfect vision. For some reason, in the state of New Hampshire, we don't take into consideration the kind of challenge which, by the way, we are very proud. In, yes, proud to in do the it. prior to 1973, children with special need were treated in a way that we sh didn't make us proud. Wow. I am very proud to be part of an education system that takes into consideration every 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 child need and strive to serve every child to the best uh, possible way. Um, Having said that, there's a disconnect with society expectation of what they want school to do and the legal expectation what they want them to do and the investment that is coming particularly to places like Manchester. Right. I will say from the state, the federal, and the local community need to be very informed mm -hmm. about our needs and also the state need to be 
take into consideration that when you, to pass a law, it's much easier. And it's easier if you are away from the people who had to pay the bill. Right. And the Manchester taxpayer have been um, experienced, in my view, some burden as a result or that expectation, the part of the state, the part of federal government, we are sending us the necessary resources. It, it is what is called in the field unfunded mandates. And this, uh, in the past 10 years, um, that is, that's have taken um, a significant, uh, have added significant burden to our district because the state have been pulling away resources at the same time that is increasing the expectation for us to provide services. For example, we are providing significant amount of services. When people look at budget, they say, well, you have less kids. Well, you only had 22 schools, just the same number one. Why is that you keep saying that you have this need? Well, for example, we provide uh, transportation for all our charter school right. that the, the we get us we don't get a single dollar from the state of New Hampshire although that was creation of the state of New Hampshire our transportation system in the state of New Hampshire I'm sorry here in Manchester it was well designed and continued to be but we no longer had that uh, that um, ability to design our own transportation system for our kit because now we have to do citywide because right. there are charter schools, for example, that do um, enroll kit, and that's fine. Like I say, it's fine. You know, right. I'm not here to argue that that is bad or a good policy, but if the state is going to impose that on us, then they need to recognize that there's a price to be paid. Right. And not alone, as you know, and not alone has the state... Like in the case of the university system, which we're not here to talk about, but in the case of the university system, it's been flat funded for the last seven years. So now it had the largest decrease in the history of the United States when uh, the state of New Hampshire reduced funding for its universities, for its public universities by 50 percent 10 years ago or eight years ago, the largest ever increase in, ed in decrease in education ever. Now, but step forward from there, in the last seven years, it's been level funded. In the case of the, uh, in the, case of the uh, state of New Hampshire, when it comes to education more generally, down from, from uh, high school down through kindergarten, not alone uh, have we had flat funding, we've actually had reduction in funding because, as you're well aware, in terms of the pension costs, for instance, they've passed the pension costs back down to the local taxpayer. Um, and so, and now the adequacy grants are, have, have been reduced another f close to $500,000 mm -hmm. if it goes ahead. Now, as our viewers might know from last week, because I mentioned last week that there was a, a battle, a discussion going on in Concord about these topics and... Um, and uh, it's, 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 uh, there have been a number of bills passed. We'll see if they'll be vetoed or not or if they'll pass the Senate. But a number of bills have been passed, and we're right in the middle of it right now. But one of them would, uh, would see the, uh, reduct that reduction in adequacy grants being cancelled, the one that's planned Correct. for this coming here, which would be, I think, that's about $450,000 worth Correct. to Manchester. I know if you may anybody on social media um, may have seen um, um, or on the news uh, Mayor Joyce Craig's Sent a sent a letter to the state house yesterday talking about funding for education in Manchester and how we needed uh, education funds here. Uh, what's interesting is that um, some of the lonely voices aren't so lonely anymore because um, the superintendent from the Bel uh, Berlin area was in mm. Concord yesterday Correct. talking about it. Um, the Nashua School District has uh, made, give, made submissions to the state, etc. Um, and uh, so, so uh, you know, the disconnect is what bugs me, and part of the reason why I do this <laughs> show is is to eliminate those those disconnects or try to yeah. because people what I don't un understand when when somebody comes to their door and says, well, let's forget about what they did before, but the, the people from Manchester who get elected in Manchester who go up to Concord and and eliminate funding in Concord, which means the local taxpayers here have to pay more, they should be challenged on the doorstep, and and if they 
this, this is not party political, because if, if they can defend doing it, then, then all I'm asking people to do is ask them. Mm. Because maybe, because it seems ridiculous to me, I would think that's a bad thing for a local representative to do. But anyway, I'm dragging you into politics, and so let, uh, yeah. let me not go there. I want to go to someplace no, else for a minute. No, uh, what I had to tell you as I'm leaving uh, the city, and I thank everyone for welcoming me here to this community. I, I, it has been a joy and, and an honor to serve our students as staff and this community. And this community has great potential and great future. But one thing that we're going to have to do is to learn how to get along better. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when it comes to education, I tried to tell people that I never met a child that want to ever told me he or she was a Republican or Democrat or right. Independent, whatever. Children are children, and they're only children one, and we need to work collaboratively to make sure that their needs are met. And shame on us if we will let politics get in the way of ed educating the next generation yeah, yeah. of citizens, which yep. is the ultimate responsibility of every generation, is right. to make sure that the generation behind us does much better than we are doing. I think that there's a thing, you know, in Ma in Manchester generally that, you know, Manchester is, uh, you know, cities have a life too. And if this, in, in the life of a city, Manchester is, I think, by most observances, uh, observations, is, uh, is um, a city that's growing. Uh, it's becoming more dynamic. It's becoming more diverse. But it's an exciting time in the history of the city of Manchester. It wasn't always so, as you <laughs> know. All these, yeah. uh, you know, mill towns of New England have gone through some tough years yeah. and even tough decades. Well, I think that there's, and this isn't. I'm not. It isn't born of wanting to criticize people, but I, it, it seems to me that. Um, when it comes to business, for instance, the business has caught up quickly and, and, and said, hey, this is happening, it's exciting. We see the developments on Elm Street and the developments in the mills and all the other places. And um, But there's a disconnect. There are still people in Manchester who uh, uh, are, 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 it's like people who were born during the Depression. They, they have to be careful because they remember when things were bad. Yeah. And so they're careful about future commitments and spending, et cetera. And I'm not suggesting people go wild in their spending, but you know the city's growing in so many other other ways, um, and and some people have yet to open their eyes to that. But I wanted to go to another place because of your during your tenure here, um, there are a couple of threads that I that I, if I were asked about you in a year or two from now or more, uh, there are a couple of things that I remember uh, uh, besides your ties. I will always remember your ties. You have a uh, your, thank your, you. I don't, I don't know if you know this. I'm not into you know talking about <laughs> sartorial elegance, but you always have had impressive ties. But that's just a little joke. Um, but uh, uh, but they do brighten thank up. You. They do brighten up a room, Doctor Vargas. Well, you know, thank you. they're good, and I think kids probably love them. Yeah, they do. But there's a couple of things. One, uh, one, 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 two things that I that I think that I will oh, that I will recognize you for, and I think you deserve great credit for, and that they're very important. Uh, one is the idea about it's about every child. You know, it, 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 that, that's, that's a simple thing to say, but everything, we could spend hours talking about it. But the idea that we were responsible to all children, so long as we are, so long as we're still only succeeding with pick your percentage, whether it's a little percentage or you're getting, you're, you've got a bigger percentage, but by, by saying that we're only looking after some ch children, it's implied that we are failing children. And if that's more than one is bad, more than one is awful. So that's one of the things they leave every child. But the other, and a, a, a other thing, a happier thing, at least it should be a happier thing, is I, I was reading. This is the second thing I would remember about you. Yeah. I was reading recently about uh, reading, uh, reading about reading, about the effect that a love of reading and kids reading has ha on, on on children and on their. Not on everything about um, on their on their income over their lifetime. It's like the game of life thing or monopoly or whatever. Um, a, and and they drew out you know a kid that reads ten minutes a day equals this. A kid that reads twenty minutes a day will do this, and a kid that reads an hour a day will do that. And um, and you have emphasized. I loved when you talked about it. you hope that every kid during the summer where every no any time would have a library card and that every kid would read. Would you like to talk about that for a minute yeah. to say because I think it's very powerful and very yeah. important. This is what I mean about how we have a great city here 
we started a partnership with the Manchester Public Library between the district and the city and uh, promoting the whole notion that every family and every child should have a library card. And uh, also during the summer, every child should be reading. And, um, and I appreciate your comment about every child. We do know the children who read on regular every day and develop a lot for reading do much better, uh, not only as um, growing up, but also as an adult. And as, uh, the love of reading is uh, extremely important, and actually it builds resilience. Uh, you, even when we have a difficult time, if we read a good book, it might... Makes us feel uh, a little better. It makes us right. feel a little better. So I, I believe that the potential is n enormous here, but we, need, we do need more reading teachers. Right now, one of the challenges that we are facing that our reading intervention and also making sure that no child fall behind right. in reading and basic skills because you cannot get to high level skill, high level thinking without having some foundation. Right. I think we all could agree with that. So uh, we had, we, I cannot be more proud of our teachers and principal and staff and family. Thousands and thousands of children are reading every summer as a result of our effort, and, and it's because collaboration. In the right. 21st century, no system can be uh, successful without strong collaboration, and we, uh, you have a, an incredible social service sector in here, and people that care about children and families, and like the Boys and Girl Club, for example, right. they are doing incredible work for our, for our students with the United Way, the Y, and the list go, goes right, on. Right. There's too many uh, to name it all, but the reality is that if it, we work together, we could have the best public school system um, in the nation. Right. I'm afraid, though, that that would be just a slogan unless we invest. This community is gonna have to ask the hard question. What would it take for us to have the best reading program in America? Right. It doesn't necessarily mean that you all you need is money. You don't. I'm not saying that money can solve everything, but if you are going to um, develop and, and continue to be a successful system, and this is a system that has delivered for so many families. I mean, one of the great things that I like about the city is the legacy here. You oh, mentioned wow. West yep. High and people are proud that right. graduated 50 years ago or that, that their children went there or Central or Memorial right. or even our elementary uh, school um, have groups that they come in and, and when I meet people in this city, first thing, less than a minute into the conversation, they tell me where they went to school, which right. is a tremendous pride. Yes. And I hope that that legacy will be forever lasting. Yeah, and it's a, it is a wonderful thing. I mean, I I've been here 26 years, so you know I'm I'm a, I'm a blow in too, you know. So okay. I don't think I'll ever be allowed to forget it, you know. So uh, it comes with something that you've been here for 26 years. It does, years it ago. does. You know, maybe they haven't learned enough about me yet. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been found out. But no, it, it it is wonderful because you know the city. It's a city, but it's it's small enough to have to have this identity. And there is a very strong tradition with our yeah. with our high schools. And you know, uh, my kids happen to go to uh, the, the ones who. Are, three of them are out of there now at Central High School and I've still one there and you know when I one of the most moving things every year um, there's a wonderful music program there as there is at many of our schools but uh, they uh, if you ever when you go into the auditorium there they have the gold star mm -hmm. and blue star the flags yep. and uh, you know it's the oldest high school in the state of New Hampshire the oldest public high school and every year they um, they read out uh, the list of uh, all the people. Now it's hundreds and hundreds of the people who were lost in in um, 
uh, from the Civil War onwards, yep. but through World War One, World War Two, Korea, on into Vietnam, etc. Yeah. Uh, it's very moving, and you look at all the young men, and I, I always think about. When I sit there, I always think that I, that they were in this room, so they're real to me for that moment. You Correct. Know? Um, and then, of course, there's the great leg- legacy of not just you know Adam Sandler, you know, but all the great people who have gone yeah. to the Manchester public school system and have done great things in business, and and we don't we don't. We don't herald that enough. We don't, oh, right. we, you know, it, it's it's an important uh, it's an important tradition. When I'm, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around all over the place, but I, I wanted to go back to the reading thing for a minute because I think it's important that people should know that the uh, Manchester City Library, the children's section of Manchester yeah. City Library, if you go online and look at it right now, I don't know when it's opening. I don't know if you know, but yep. it, it's opening soon. They've been going through a, a lot, you know, for the last number of months. Uh, refurbishing it completely and it looks it looks it it's starting to take shape now and it looks absolutely beautiful yeah. so hopefully I just you have them here and they that would be a very valuable show yeah for your audience and for the entire community because i come i'm you know i'm an immigrant and, and we are very fortunate those of us people like myself who end up in such a caring society but also i still carry my library car Right. With me and um, I, uh, New York City, where I first landed as an immigrant with not a single word of English, um, the library uh, helped level the playing field. There were no books at home, but there were plenty in the library, and, um, and that to me was an incredible joy because in the society that I came from, the Dominican Republic, you didn't have such a system. Right. Um, in pretty much in, in New York City, in every five blocks, you have um, a public library. And in here, you have a pretty strong public library system. And, and I want to thank the residents of this community for supporting um, that system that, that allows so many of our children to, uh, to take books and to be part of um, generation after generation of people like myself and others who always could count it on a good public library right. book. And of course, and, and I'm a big lover of books. I, you know, my wife kills me because I have so many books at home. She's always, <laughs> she's all, and I have to sneak them in the back stairway because if she sees me coming home with two more yeah. books, she's pulling her hair out. She'd kill me for saying that. But yeah. anyway, uh, but of course, the public libraries nowadays, you have you know computer access that kids totally. don't often have. And, and, and if you go over to Manchester Public Library in the afternoon and you'll see uh, uh, kids there and totally. parents working you know on uh, on uh, computers and then all the other resources that uh, that uh, the library has but um i uh, it, it's just it's it's uh, it's inc- the, the amount of the amount of uh, you know sometimes people from the outside are inclined to they talk about things like this generation and our kids are this that and the other thing and i want to tell them they're just wrong you know you're wrong because <laughs> you know I, I you know i'm not in school every day but i'm there often enough to know that they're wrong as a society you talked about uh uh you know the the the, the boys and girls club but what about all the private businesses that are you know like um velcro the mm-hmm. velcro company and there's a new there's another company has started at one of the other schools now Correct, is that right um, the power company here oh yeah ever source yeah. ever source yeah no this is a generous community and i said that manchester is positioned to provide the best education system in the state of new hampshire because we have so many valuable resources right. from business to hospital to public library system to a museum and the school the universities uh, the airport the university um and uh, the what the future um what is ahead for us in the future is that we're going to have to look into the education system and make sure that we uh, no longer consider learning to be just in the four wall of the schools. Um, there are uh, opportunities here that I second to none, like, for example, the MST. Right. And, uh, many of our students in our four high school, many of them are going to taking college courses. Right. And um, I want to thank the state of New Hampshire because right now if a kid um, is taking a, uh, um, um, 
it's part of a program like the Sting Ahead or yeah, the uh, Sting Ahead at, on right, at West High School. West High on OMST, they could take two college courses every year for free in the area of technology, science, math, and engineering. So any courses that is related to those fields um, well, I'll give as you part of that, of, that, of that program. So we have a partnership with a, a, a Catholic medical center um, where our kids are going there for a, a, um, a field trip and working with, with physician there and, 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 um, and um, staff member of the hospital so that they can explore their interests. Right. And, um, you know, the numbers of career that have disappeared in my lifetime are enormous. I, we could spend the whole program just yeah. listing. And then Absolutely. the number of career that I knew, like the whole notion of computer engineer, right. or software engineer. I mean, they it, it just... And it's just and, so unbelievable. Yes. And there's a new day coming yeah. that, like, I, 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 I could talk about this for for, for a long yeah. time, and I, I'll, I'll, I won't do that. But uh, you know, uh, we look at the, uh, the 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 car industry as an example. Uh, if you are in, so we've got Britain, France, China, but there are others. But the specifics I know about Britain, for instance, Britain has had a conservative government for the last eight or nine years. It's not the most progressive of European countries. So. It shouldn't be taken as the sort of, you know, they're not Sweden uh, or Denmark, which are wonderful places that I like a lot. But um, in 2040, and for anybody who's paying attention, that's 21 years away. So if you're, if you're 10 years old today, this will be when you're 31. In 2040 in Britain, all combustion, internal combustion engines will be banned from being sold. Correct. Ten years later, so you'll be able to buy one up until 2040. From 2040 to 2050, you'll be allowed to drive the ones that still exist. Mm -hmm. And in 2050, they will, be, they will not be allowed on the roads. Yeah. And that's law in Britain today. Now, think about a kid in Manchester school system today who's in eighth grade, and he's 13 years old. In 30 years' time or so, um, he'll be 43, because see, I, how wonderful my math That's is. That's very good. 13 and 30. The nuns <laughs> did a great job. Um, but, you know, and, and you just, and without going off, because we're not here to do a science and future program, but, you know, just picture, all gas stations in Britain will be defunct. There won't be gas stations. Correct. And if you've learned how to, you know, put the manifold onto the, you know, engine of a, engine block of a, of an internal combustion engine, gas or diesel, you you'll be the blacksmith of today. You know, the, the horseshoe guy. Um, there are no jobs for people baling hay and and shoeing horses. Yeah. There will be no jobs for them. So. That's the future that we're preparing for. Let me ask you about um, um, something else, uh, Manchester Proud. So um, I think many people watching this show especially will be aware that the Manchester community has come together for Manchester Proud. But would you like to address me, just to oh, talk excellent. about Manchester it's Proud? Because I think it's probably the biggest thing that we have in front of us right now. Absolutely. Manchester Proud, we all need to be thankful for their leadership, and they, they are participation from the colleges and universities, the business community, civic leaders, and they have come together to work with the public school system in here uh, to have a collective vision, a collective plan that we position this district to be one of the best in the country. I have no doubt that we will succeed with strong collaboration, uh, working together, everything is possible. And I think that's what they are. That, that's what their goals and objective. They have uh, tried to engage thousands and thousands of, uh, of, of, of people from all mm -hmm. walks of life, uh, from school children. I mean, uh, high school kids to uh, families to business um, to the uh, private and public sector. So we are thankful for. Uh, to 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 the Manchester Proud right. uh, for the incredible uh, work that they are doing, and um, we hope. And sorry that I won't be around to see I that plan, but I think that they deserve um, unanimous support in the part of right. all of us. And I would tell you, as a superintendent, I indebted 
for that kind of energy commitment. And they not only just invest in their time, there are so many people involved that they too many to mention. Yes. Uh, except to say that they are, they we need to thank them for their investment of time, talent, uh, financial resources, and they are committed to work with this community to come up with a plan that is doable. Right. And uh, it's based on our real um, the current reality, and try to position us to make sure that the system continue to deliver high quality education for every child in the city. Right. I, I, I have to I have to say I was very uh, honored and, and grateful to have been uh, one of the people selected on the committee. Congratulations. Of 28. I, I, thank you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm, I take it as a, a serious um, commitment and uh, and uh, duty. And um, I'm looking forward to working with the people we've had. Uh, um, we're just starting our meetings. Um, but, you know, the, the community, that, that group of 28, I, I have to tell you that um, I was amazed at the diversity of the group. I, I, oftentimes, you know, it can be the same sort of talking heads of mm-hmm. whom I might be one. Um, but no, That's important. Don't put yourself uh, well, down. Well, yes, but I think <laughs> if it's only the same... In a know, democratic society, yes, opinion matters. But I think this, so. they've done a wonderful job. I, 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 I'm not aware of who were the ones doing the choosing. They they chose from the people who, who uh, came before them. But uh, first of all, it's very diverse. They, they, they have 40% of the t- Committee of 28 represents minority communities because uh, 43% of people in Manchester are now either, you know, historically Hispanic or of uh, or, um, uh, African American or immigrants or uh, you mean in the school Asian, di- in the school district yes in I'm the sorry. school district uh, yeah. but a- Asian community and yeah. you know you know one of the things about the diversity thing you know and a few Irish um, one, yeah. one of the thing is you know you think people think they they they, they mix up uh, or or treat as a single thing. Um, under this heading of diversity, that it must that so, sort of minorities, therefore poor, therefore refugees, therefore immigrants, etc., and those are all very different things. Correct. And uh, we have uh, we have fifth generation, you know, um, um, uh, people of Chinese descent Correct. living in Manchester. We've got fifth generation people of African American descent, Correct. and we have people who came here two years ago. Correct. Uh, so the color of their skin doesn't dictate, you know. Correct. Who they are, and some of the greatest needs, actually the greatest needs, and the people with the greatest poverty in our city are often people who uh, are, you know, of European extraction. Let's Correct. put it that way, right? So, so the lines sometimes people put people in boxes too too easy. But what was wonderful, what I what I will tell people now is that when they see the group, the the the, the Manchester Pro group, it is broad spectrum it, it is it is uh, it socioeconomically diverse and and ethnically diverse and social strata and wealth yes. and political opinion there's a, a, you know it's a wonderful and i'm sure it's going to be quite contentious yeah. at times you know but they've done a wonderful job i'm yeah. very hopeful yeah because in the end you know i've been saying from this desk for some years the, just repeating the fact like you have tonight that manchester spends less per student than anybody else, any other uh, uh, school district mm-hmm. in the state of New Hampshire. And uh, and that's just a fact. And, and not alone is it a fact, but we have been slipping further down, maybe not in the last year, um, because our... Anyway, but um, w- there was a time 10 years ago when Manchester was in the bottom 10 out of 165, whatever it was, and then it got to be close to the bottom. Well, now we're on the bottom, but there's an g- actual mm-hmm. gap from us to the nearest, to the next nearest one. Um and uh, um, sorry, just I got a text in there out of nowhere. I should it's ignore okay. it. <laughs> um, but but uh, so that's happened. The other, and of course, we also have the largest uh, class sizes in the state of New Hampshire. I know we've right. made some changes to that. Um, but the answer. So so what the discussion in Manchester ought to be, rather than people taking shots at each other or shouting at each other, is if I've always sought to just let us agree on the facts. The basic facts, which are that our system's underfunded, uh, and 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 implied in the solution is that things will change, mm-hmm. and not just like you said, throwing money at it. People often say to me, "Oh, Jim, you just want to throw money at the school yep. system." Well, you know, hands up, I do. So I'll admit I'm, to that. I'm against uh, the whole concept of throwing money. We have to spend money responsible. Right. We also need to be competitors. 
the reality is that I have family that have met with me that say, I want a strong reading program in our school. I want my children to have what all the children have in the surrounding district. That is a fair request. Yes. And that yes. is a fair um, uh, goal for this community to strive. Like, for example, let's give our students the same opportunity that all the students take for granted in the surrounding district. Let me give you an example. We were running middle school here. We are health teacher. Right. We are foreign languages. The class size size of large, I mean, um, the, we have so much work to do. Even though I have said to you that our people do more with less than any other group of people that I know of. And I think that people need to come and see what we do and also benchmark us. Right. Don't just say, I heard the superintendent, just go in and Google the state ed department, provide this information, it's easily available. Right. Uh, you could compare, for example, Portsmouth and Manchester, or even Nashville, uh, right. or any district. And I normally tell parents that my job as a superintendent is to make sure that their children have a fair shot. And that is if the children need computer to make sure that they don't fall behind in technology, that we do that. That if we need to provide professional development and training to teach it, to keep them uh, well prepared to do the work that we ask them to do, that we have to invest. And uh, my hope is through this discussion that the community is going through, um, drafting that strategic plan, Right. to position the district to be one of the best in the country, if not the best, uh, that uh, this community come out with a greater understanding of what, the, what kind of investment does this city have to make, the state and the federal government, to position the district to do the job that we ask our teacher to do each and every day. Right. Uh, which is not easy to do, even when you have the resources necessary. And um, people say, "Give me an example of what you're talking about." I say, "Well, if you are a teacher, a kindergarten teacher in Bedford, he or she will have twenty kids with one pair of profession." When I first arrived into this city, I went to classes with twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one kids. We have made a little progress, as you pointed out, but it's still in the high 20. Right. And then this coming year, in this current budget, uh, we begin our first phase to bring our uh, class size to what is considered acceptable. As I mentioned to you, if you went to school during the time that I went to, the teacher only needed to have 30 pencil for those right. kids. And, the situation was a little bit more uh, less challenging than what we had to, to, uh, to do today for kids. The expectation was totally different than what it is right. today. So I want to thank all our teachers, our administrator, our families, and the taxpayer of this community who I am thankful for. Um, despite the fact that we spend the less, we still have some of the best program. Uh, if you are families and you want your kid to take an AP classes in calculus, right. physics, chemistry, foreign language, an incredible music program, the arts, uh, you name it. Um, however, if we does success, will not be sus sustainable w unless we engage in a process of continuous improvement. Right. To take the system for where it's at today to bring it to even a higher, higher level. And I don't have a no ashamed of saying this. When it comes to providing our children with the best tools, the best education, I'm very competitive. Our children are no less intelligent than any group of kids in the state of the nation. And they are as capable as being the best that they can be. Uh, if we give them the support, particularly to the people on the front line that are doing the work. 
Right. Um, um, our teachers, our principal, and our staff. And I, I, you know, we're coming to the end of uh, our thing. We have a quick call here. Sorry. Go ahead, caller. Hello, caller. Did we get you? I think we just missed them. Um, you have a minute or two to call again. We're down to the last three or four minutes. I'm sorry I uh, missed your caller, but please try again. I think I double tapped you there. Um, you know, I, I, we don't have a lot of time left, you know, but I think it's just we should recognize because some of the people watching this uh, program will be teachers and administrators and secretaries and paras and subs, etc. And, uh, you know, any conversation with the superintendent we're talking about holistically across the school district, I think um, it, it, we have to recognize that they, they are working without a contract now and the teachers have done so for a year and um, that, that needs to be resolved. Absolutely, right. yeah. Yeah, because it's just not. It's just not. You can't expect. Um, you can't. Ex- it's 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 a miracle that they go in and do the things that they do every day. Despite that, I like to think also, Doctor Vargas, that you know, given our challenges and and the the economic challenges that we've we've placed ourselves in, uh, that that uh, you know, my fiscally conservative friends would see that as something that you know, this is an opportunity to drive innovation and drive efficiency. Like we've we've we've. There has been great innovation in the district. The, the school board, which is often maligned, and I'll be the fir- first maligner <laughs> sometimes, but, uh, but uh, from a policy standpoint, the, the school board over time has done a pretty good job. Not yet. I think we're, I think we're pro- they probably won't allow another call in at this point because we're down to the last three minutes. But the school board has done a pretty good job of, from a policy point of view of opening things up for, you know, uh, experiential learning and learning, you know, VLAX and ver- you know, all the different, there's lots of opportunities. They've done, they've done that well, right? I mean, as a Absolutely, district, we, yeah. we've yeah. opened up. We, they've done a great job. Yeah, some districts are sort of holding on to what they have and we won't allow mm-hmm. change. So we, we're in a great place that uh, uh, people know that something has to change now. And hopefully the, the taxpayers, the people of Manchester, will that pride that they have in their school system will see them saying it's no longer acceptable that that we fund our schools less well than everybody else and that there are lots of people like you and others working very hard. Um, we're here at the last minute or so, uh, Dr. Vargas, as you depart from this show, would you like to say a word to the people of Manchester as we... Yeah, one big word. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Thank de, you so much nada. for uh, all the support that you give our students and, um, and our family. This is a great community. Um, it has been a pleasure and an honor to serve um, the students, families, and the staff, and, and in general, this community. Good. Well, thank you, Dr. Barry. Happy St. Patrick Day. Oh, thank you. Way. Thank you. I have to March say. March 17th, we all March are. March 17th. Well, I like to think of it as the High Holy Month with the 17th right in the center. Okay. It's like, you know, we could wind, <laughs> we wind down, especially in Manchester. But as we are in the last minute, I just want to say, and it's easy, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, to sort of indulge in platitudes, but uh, you have been a breath of fresh air in the, in the district of Manchester. I like the fact that you've been forthright and, uh, and direct. And um, and the district is going to miss you. Uh, uh, parents will miss you. The school district will miss you. I think you've done a wonderful job. You've left. You, without any doubt, nobody will claim but that you've left the school district in a better condition than when you came in, at a minimum. And so, congratulations and thank you. And I wish you all the best in whatever you do next. Thank you, Dr. Vargas. Thank you to you, and I Good. will miss you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, from Jim O'Connell. Uh, and thank you for. Uh, for uh, being with us for another uh, for another uh, episode good night now